Hello there, Common Wolf from me. Nintendo's 2023 to 2024 fiscal year was filled with dev kits and much more leaked hardware and software information about the Nintendo Switch 2. So be sure to leave a like, subscribe and press notification bell and let's go over what we know about the successor to the aging Nintendo Switch. And we begin in late August at Gamescom 2023, when Nintendo did their secret wonder previews, it worked as planned. What was less perfect, and which Nintendo probably regrets to this day, is the Gamescom exclusive to developers and close to press and public demonstration of the next-gen system. One where they must have lost trust for some Western developers. As nearly all details about the next system leaked afterwards in early September, to the degree that it was almost the Nintendo Switch 2's unofficial reveal. Nvidia DLSS upscaling and optimizing by all indications confirmed and so was the presence of the next system and Nintendo bringing it there. Since how else could they have the Unreal Engine 5 Matrix Awakens demo up and running at a comparable visual quality to current gen consoles, or Breath of the Wild upscaled to 4K for that matter? You can't. This is by all indications a hybrid successor, but which focuses more on the modern 4K TV docked experience and not only on HD handheld mode. It simply feels like all was revealed in that instant apart from pictures and the actual name and codename, which surprisingly have managed to remain on the wraps. That is unless YouTube leaked the name, but we will get to that. September 2023 also gave us a Nintendo Direct with the reveal of Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door Switch, and with it, colored action button commands tied to this one, and Super Mario RPG corresponding to a certain Nintendo legend. Since both games match the color scheme of the Super Famicom and PAL region Super Nintendo, a change in the case of Paper Mario from its GameCube original. With it, videos about the Nintendo Switch 2 having Super Famicom style colored action buttons started popping up, and the system being nicknamed the Super Nintendo Switch. Either way, October 2023, the launch of Super Mario Bros. 1, a month where we started to get rumors about the next Mario for Switch 2 and it being open world. Not only that, Far Cry 7, Monster Hunter, later to be revealed Wilds, and Kingdom Hearts 4 being planned for the next system. And not only that, possibly on the same day as the PS5 and Xbox Series X. On the hardware front, we got more rumblings about Nvidia's new system on chip and DLSS upscale. Combined, bring the next Nintendo system to perhaps even surpass the Xbox Series S. Both when it comes to resolutions and frame rate. Clearly, a more appealing prospect for third-party AAA and especially Japanese developers who have kept the biggest titles away from the Nintendo Switch due to system limitations. October was also the month when Nintendo started to comment a little about the whole situation. Or rather not, since President Shintaro Furukawa stated to Nikkei that the revealed Switch software was their focus until the end of the April 2023 to March 2024 fiscal year. Meanwhile, Nintendo of America president Doug Bowser, in his interview with Inverse, hinted towards continuing the current Nintendo account over to the next generation. Transition being the key word that Nintendo wasn't ready to bring up yet in the fiscal year that we have left. Then, in November, besides the Zelda movie announcement, an interesting dual screen system pattern far by Nintendo was discovered. It doesn't have to mean that the Switch 2 will be the new DS or 3DS in unlocked mode. But at the same time, Nintendo might be experimenting with a dual screen concept, but in a different way than expected. Something that Endo later visualized in a Switch 2 video, but when it comes to undocked and docked play. But more on that as we enter the year the system is likely to be reviewed. As December and then January, so transition from the old 2023 to the new 2024 year, brought a number of reports and comments from insiders about the upcoming system. We got the first signs to a price, namely $399 or $400, and game prices likely also heading towards $70. Tears of the Kingdom seems to have been the first indication of the new norm in the next generation. Plus the belief that this successor is more of a new iteration what works and isn't broken, rather than a revolution which the Switch was to the Wii U in 2017. A less risky succession for Nintendo, and with it, their third-party developer partners, to develop new games, all in the name of increasing the appeal of the next system. One of the mentioned changes was also addressed by Omdia analyst Mr. Hiroshi Hayashita. Omdia specializes in system displays data and hardware specifications. Through Bloomberg, 
Mr. Hayashida presents a signs that the launch Nintendo Switch 2 will not have an undocked OLED display, but rather a bigger 8-inch LCD HD display. It still remains to be confirmed whether this one will be full HD, 1080p or remain below this threshold. One that a number of undocked PC systems have been reaching for in 2022 and 2023. Plus the PlayStation Portal with its 8 inches full HD LCD display, which requires a PS5 to even work. But January was the month that kept on giving as the annual GDC survey showed that at least 8% of the Ask game developers had Nintendo Switch successor dev kits and are developing games for said system. In the same survey, 32% of the survey developers replied that the Nintendo Switch successor is the system that interests them the most right now. Insider Takashi Mochizuki could also report that Nintendo is planning to manufacture and deliver 10 plus million Nintendo Switch 2 systems in its first fiscal year on the market. Everything looked bright, and some even hoped for a reveal before the end of the Nintendo fiscal year, but that was naturally too good to be true, as February was the recall back to reality. A shower of cold water that brought up another thing that we need in 2024, patience. For a first party Nintendo Direct which reveals Nintendo franchise games, and naturally the first look at Nintendo's next system some point to a reveal in June. It is just that this might be old news due to changes within Nintendo that occurred throughout February. Namely, that the launch of the Nintendo Switch 2 has internally been pushed from 2024 to at the earliest March 2025. This update was first brought up by leakers and then reaffirmed by several developer sources and in the end, the credible Japanese financial newspaper Nikkei. At best, a launch exactly 8 years after the launch of the Nintendo Switch. And all of this happened before the Switch had even turned 7 years old on March 3rd, 2024. The longest life cycle for any Nintendo TV system without a successor revealed being out. The Nikkei report truly solidified the fact that the Nintendo Switch 2 will not be on store shelves for the 2024 holiday season, but rather sometime in the first half of 2025. It makes sense, as the Nintendo Switch is still selling far better than any Nintendo system over 7 years on the market. The same article also pointed to a bigger display for the Switch successor compared to the original and OLED models of the current system. Not 8 inches specifically, but it follows the same lines. Not only that, the release move might very well be a result of the impact the record weak yen has on Nintendo as we have to realize that the yen 100% impacts Nintendo's outside Japan production costs, which pretty much applies to the entire hardware business of the Kyoto Giants. Their hope lies in that the Bank of Japan and the Japanese government will take more serious action to strengthen the yen in the second half of 2024, also that they can launch the Switch 2 in more favorable terms in the first half of 2024. After all, launching a new generation succeeding your current record-breaking system is the most riskful move Nintendo can make. 24 hours after that article, we got a reveal of Pokemon Legends ZA for a worldwide simultaneous release in 2025. No indication of when in the year, only that it's still coming to the Nintendo Switch. At the same time, pointing to that Pokemon Gen 10 will likely be the first big Pokemon release exclusive for the Nintendo Switch 2. On to the last month of the previous fiscal year, namely March, which was interesting to say the least. We made a video on the massive potential of backwards compatibility. And then, right off Nintendo's own Mario Day announcements, YouTube pulled an oopsie in one of their pre-video questionnaires. PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and Switch, attach. Personally, I won't put too much into it, since for one, the name is terrible. And the second reason why I didn't attach much attention to this one was the way it was presented. Not Nintendo Switch Attach, like in the case of PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, but just Switch Attach. Speaking of the two other systems, according to yet another rumor, Persona 6 is in development for PS5, Xbox Series X and the Nintendo Switch 2. On top of that, there are rumblings about the preparations for the reveal as Nintendo apparently has requested certain developers to deliver video material. Interesting, what made me create this video for the start of the new Nintendo fiscal year is the key detail we started with. Namely, a rumor first brought up by Nash Weedle that the original Switch 2 dev kits have apparently seen an update and been replaced. Stating from his direct developer source that, quote, 
Now the tools allow us to go one step further. End quote. Nash Riedel himself thinks that the developer is hinting towards upscale, not AMD FSR, which the Switch has been able to take advantage of, but Nvidia's DLSS, which the current Switch is not compatible with. Out of that potential Goku and rest in peace Dragon Ball creator Akira Toriyama reference, we have reached the April 2024 to March 2025 fiscal year. What do you think of the Nintendo Switch info we know so far and what will happen now? Sound off in the comment section down below. If you haven't already, then be sure to leave a like, subscribe and press the notification bell, and for all notifications. Last but not least, a big thanks to all our patreon.com slash common patrons who keep us going. Special shoutouts go to Royal Producers Zach Johnson and JC Funk and Heroes, Holly Wolf, Cheryl and Garrett Hoy. You all rock and please enjoy one or both of these two awesome videos.